So there they are, the contenders. And I was going to bring a rose for today's X party, but I was working. In fact, I'm still on call. So uh, there won't be a rose, but whoops, there will be a fake sunflower. Okay, I have, before sitting down here tonight, I have gone through my notes about all of my dueling decks and, uh, and I've selected 13, my baker's dozen. And uh, here's my, uh, <laughs> my rose, AKA artificial sunflower um, to choose the lucky bachelor X. Um, the, um, this is going to be a little bit funky because uh, I was reviewing how I did this last year and I realized there is a wild card deck um, that just has to be there. So I'm going to throw her in too. So that's going to give me 14. And the way we're going to go with this is I am going to pull a card from each of the 14 decks and use that hopefully to help me pick five top decks and then a showdown okay Whew. and before I get started you know I had been congratulating myself and having made like this one decision that um, I will be using a calibration deck again this year and that I will be using the standard playing card deck a uh, standard playing card tarot deck in all of its yumminess um, and then yesterday in the mail um uh, the lovely folks at Ars and Tarot sent me a copy of the Portrait de Paris, Portrait de Paris, um, a uh, historic, when is it from? 1735 to 1751, a historic playing card deck, which is truly yummy. Um, and so, you know, this might be making a cameo appearance or two in my calibrations. The, the point of the calibrations really this year is for me to be working with um, working with playing cards and that whole energy of playing card pips and of that format of the playing card and just having that be my side piece for the two and a half months of drop them. Okay, um, so, <laughs> but you know, it's like you make a decision and then it's like my my 14th deck that has popped in, my, my wild card deck. I, it is what it is, people. It is what it is. Okay, so we're going to be pulling one card at a time from all of the 14 decks. And uh, yeah, and then we're gonna think about what what they, uh, use that somehow, use that. This is the process, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. The um, other thing about this process is this is really a chance for the deck to just speak directly to me. You know, uh, I'm not going to put too much intentionality into it. I've been using significator cards all along, but this is really just a, a more direct connection with the deck. So starting with the Lilifer Tarot, and I have both the first edition and the new edition that was kickstarted, the gold edition. Um, this is the first edition. Okay. Lilifer. And she is giving me, whoops, the King of Pentacles. Okay. The King of Pentacles. Beautiful card. And uh, Tarot of the Crone. Ellen Lorenzi Prince's Tarot of the Crone. Mm. The Eight of Discs. Okay. Nature Scape Tarot. A deck that, um, you know, the natural vistas are just really breathtaking to me. And this is the King of Cups. Wow, oh, okay. Chicoli Tarot. A deck that, you know, I've been intrigued with forever. And uh, yeah, it has, a, it, it, it has its uh, hooks in me. She has her hooks in me, her little, her little creepy girl, little girl hooks. 
and that is the Knight of Swords. Oh, okay. Knight of Swords is a card that I got yesterday in yesterday's deck dialogue. Oh my God, look at her. Okay. Avatara. Avatara. This deck has kind of blown me away. It feels very powerful in my hands. What does she want to say to me? <laughs> okay, the title card, yes. Uh, let's try that again, but that's just perfect. The title card, of course, of course. The Seven of Wands, oh my God. You know, this is one of my cards, the Seven of Wands. It's a card that uh, that always like has a direct connection to me. And look at Frida uh, with the wasps and the sunflower. <laughs> What are you saying to me, Avatara? Okay. And now my soul card deck. So the deck that I constructed out of my own, um, out of the, the Deborah Koff Chapin uh, two deck series of soul cards, the 120 cards, I selected the 78 that are for me the tarot. And this is the star. <sighs> yeah. Okay. And now Red Seeds Tarot. Linda Hunt's beautiful deck about the Eleusinian mysteries. Powerful diving into archetype. And we have here the chariot. Oh, holy cow. Okay. And the um, Shining Tribe Tarot, just read with this yesterday. Um, powerful deck. Give me a chance to also work deeply with, with myth and archetype. Strength. Okay. And a surprisingly strong contender. Um, some of you have written and said, oh, no, this this is, no, don't underestimate this deck. This is the Dreaming Way Tarot. <sighs> oh, the moon. Okay. And the Astara Tarot. You know, this deck, um, I have a very deep connection with this deck, but I've Never worked with it extensively. Uh, whoops. I'm yearning to work with this deck, but I just don't know if now is the right time. And this is the Seven of Pentacles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there might be some harvest to reap here, or I might need to be patient. I don't know. And the Marielle. You know, a lot of you have said, like, look, Esther, if you're not going to, I mean, you've got to use this deck. It's, it's, it's so deep. It's so powerful. Um, and somehow, you know, I stay a little bit aloof from it. Oh, and it is saying the Eight of Wands just leaped out. Okay, Eight of Wands is a card I've gotten a lot in these uh, dialogues. And there's something about fire and speed and kind of pushing through uh, to where I need to go and what is sort of unfolding for me. And um, yeah, so now in my hands I have Tierra May's Ritual Tarot. A deck I'm also really connected to. And that is, is that the moon? Or is that the devil? Well, that's the Hierophant. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, this is hard, people. And uh, Maggie Steve Fodder's Raven's Prophecy. I love this deck. I don't know if it has the traction I need, but oh, I keep coming back to this deck. And the Page of Swords. 
Um, I did have this impulse to pull the top card, the Five of Cups. Huh, the Five of Cups. That's what my uh, talisman is for today. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's why I keep coming back to this deck is the Five of Cups. But it's also very Page of Swordsy. It might, it just might not be where I need it to be right now. I don't think I need the Page of Swords. Um, I think, oh, I think once again, Raven's Prophecy. It's just it doesn't quite have uh, the ballast, the heft it, that I need right now. I think so. That's out. Um, my wild card deck is Pagan Otherworlds. Pagan Otherworlds. Um, I didn't even dialogue with this deck this year, but uh, it just, it pushed its way in just at the last minute. I like having wild cards. Here we go. Pagan Otherworlds. Okay, Ace of Swords. Yeah, I mean, I don't need Page of Swords. I need Ace of Swords. So it's taking the place of Raven's Prophecy. Okay, so now let's see if I can take these 13 cards, these 13 decks, and um, okay, I think just I feel I don't feel drawn to the King of Pentacles in the Lilith. Lilifer, sorry, Lilifer deck. I, I really am drawn to this deck. It's a beautiful deck. It has a lot. It gave me a really good dialogue. Um, I love the backs. But King of Pentacles, Heir of Earth, that's just not what I need right now. I need something that's helping me deal with fire and water. Um, I need something that's helping me deal with the feminine but then Terror of the Crone, Eight of Discs, this also, the sort of solidity of this earth energy. Let me just see what, what uh, Ellen Lorenzi Prince says about this card. Security. I know what is mine. I guard and keep it. Four guardian pillars with four walls outstretched like wings between them. Security can require both effort and knowledge to implement. You will find resources are available to you when you approach the situation without anxiety. I, I just don't think I need security. I don't think this is the right, the right place for me. So both of these actually, the kind of King of Pentacles and then the Eight of Pentacles, they're both pointing toward a solidity and stability that things for me need to be a little bit more unbounded and a little bit more wild. Okay. What else can I cut? Um, oh. I think the, hi the, the Hierophant energy, I mean, I really like the Ritual Tarot and I like this kind of teacherly energy and certainly the five, the fiveness of the Hierophant is really important to me. Witness my Five of Cups. That was my talisman that I pulled today. And being drawn to the Five of Cups energy of that mournful turning point energy, the way in which I'm at a five in my life right now. I'm in my 50s, that, that pivotal thing. But I think, oh, I'm kind of talking myself back into it. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can go at it another way. Um, I don't think much as I admire the Dreaming Way, I just, I think it's not going to take me where I need to go. I really admire this deck and I'm going to play with this deck, but not for this challenge. Okay. <sighs> Red Seeds. I don't know. Oh, I think I'm still there. Red Seeds. Being guided by my own intuition with this deck, the star in, in my deck. <laughs> oh, oh, that's strong. Okay, King of Cups, beautiful. I, lo I, I love this, 
this energy of, I love that it's the King of Cups. I love the vista of this deck, but I don't love the backs. But even if I did love the backs, I think this is just going to be too limited for two and a half months. So I want to play more with the Naturescapes Tarot. It's a powerful deck. Um, I want to read more with it, but I'm not going to drop them with it. Okay. Um, uh, I think that I am feeling a kind of similar movement with all of these three, with these three cards. And I think Shining Tribe, okay, I, I can't rule it out yet. Oh, I can't roll out any of these. Oh, no. What about Mary L? Can I rule her out for the ritual? I think I'm going to rule out the ritual. I don't think it, it is putting itself forth as Hierophant, but I don't think I want to entrust myself to it as Hierophant. I couldn't recognize the card when it first came out, which, I mean, that's... I don't know the archetypes well enough yet in this deck. And so part of the challenge would be to get to know the archetypes, but I don't think I trust its hierophantic energy just yet. Oh, that sounds harsh, but ritual tarot is out. Okay, so now we have, we've got six. Can I narrow it down to five? I got interrupted in the middle of that, um, and uh, I thought I'd narrow things down to six, but I'd left two cards out, so it's really, I'm still at eight. So let's see if I can get things down to five <laughs> from eight <laughs> out of the original 13 slash 14. So the Mary L, you know, I'm. it always, it's like I sort of feel this sideways connection to this deck. It It is deep and powerful. This particular card is about kind of trusting what is uh, awakening in the self. Um, there's a sense of the propulsive energy. You know, you've got this, the dreamer and these flames, um, the the goddess Nut, you know, the night sky. Um, there's something Phoenix-like that's being born. It's gorgeous. Trusting in that kind of uh, arising from the depths is really powerful. It doesn't quite speak to me, but it's it's so powerful. I have to keep it in. This is much more simple and straightforward. You know, I think if I did the my wild card deck that just pushed its way in, I mean, I love this deck. It's so beautiful, but is it really going to push me? Um, I'm going to leave it in for now. <laughs> leaving everything in for now. My own deck, I have to leave that in for now. The chariot, I have to leave that in for now. <laughs> Fuck. I'll just leave them all in for now. No. The knight of swords. Ugh, leaving it in. <laughs> leaving them all in. I'm looking at them. I've got like strength and uh, eight of pentacles. Or sorry, Seven of Pentacles and the Seven of Wands. Let's try this again. Seven of Wands and Seven of Pentacles. They have to stay in. Um, Chicoli, you're amazing, but you're out. This is a powerful deck, a powerful card, but I think it's going to be too limiting. I need to work with this deck, but it's out. Okay. Um... Rachel Pollock, it would be amazing to work with your deck. I guess you're still in for now. Red Seeds. Mm. Okay, still in for now. Um, so it means one of these three. One of these three. These are all on the fence. Um I think I, I think I have to let my deck go. I, oh, 
Oh, that's hard. Okay, I've got to let Pagan Other Worlds. Again, I keep being drawn to this deck, but it's 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 too easy. I love it. I want to play with it. I want to hold it. I want to fondle it. It's too easy. Okay, Pagan Other Worlds is out. Okay, so between these two. Um, hmm. I'm not being very decisive this year, am I? I mean, in some ways I am, but in other ways, I think Marielle is still just not, I don't want to work with it, but I feel like it, it keeps holding me. I've got, I'm definitely um, pushed away from it. All right, Marielle is out. I'm just going to listen to the fact that I don't seem to want to work with it. And now I have these five. And I think I'm going to go back to each of these decks and pull again. So, Avatara. This feels hard, people. Okay, the Princess of Swords. Oh, look at the hummingbird. Okay. And uh, Alstara, Alstara, Avatara. Whoops, we had a jumper, and the jumper was the Queen of. It's the Queen of Cups. Huh. Okay. The Queen of Cups. Shining Tribe. Speaker of Stone. So that's the King of Pentacles. Okay, I think you're out. I think you're out. But I'm not sure. We'll, we'll hold off for a second. And Red Seeds. Ooh, the Misties. Okay, this is the fool. <laughs> wow. All right. And what are we missing here? Oh, yeah, just had a jumper. Oh, wow. Okay, the Empress. Okay, so... Yeah, I think that... Um, Speaker of Stones is out, and I think I'm still, I think we're now, we're still going to keep going. Um, these all are really powerful in different ways. The Fool, you know, for all the reasons. Queen of Cups, she is definitely an archetype I need to be embodying. The Princess of Swords, let's just see what... Um, what Gabby says about the Princess of Swords. Oh. Bright, youthful intelligence, a keen, immature mind, the danger of naivete, to be a little cautious or defensive. Yeah, it's really it's really Page of Swords. Um, to venture beyond your safe space, to burst your bubble. Yeah, that youthful sword energy. That hummingbird energy. Um, oh, I hate to say goodbye to Avatara but I might need to. I'm not sure, but I might need to. Um, or maybe I do one more round. Maybe I do one more round. Oh, I'm gonna do one more round. Okay, Avatara starting with you. I'm just reluctant to let you go. It's just really clear. Even if you're a little bit young, even if you're a little bit impulsive for me a little bit defensive i don't want to let you go and you're saying okay you don't have to let me go don't let me go here i am the moon okay but i have a feeling if i hold on to you avatara i can't have red seeds <laughs> oh, 
going, no, the high priestess. Okay, okay. <laughs> this is, and then I'm super attached to the Ostara. I don't want to let this one go either. Oh, it's hard this year. Death. And I'm thinking that the one that I am going to have to let go is my own deck. Because my own deck, I don't need to do drop them 78 with it. Yeah, it's saying, it's, this is the two of pentacles. I mean, the two of wands. <sighs> saying there's a portal here. You can go through it. I know I can. Oh. You guys, this is so hard. This is so hard. Okay. Um, I am going to narrow this down by having a, um, by doing the two of wands in each of these decks and picking the card that is using a significator reading to do the two of wands with each of these decks. Okay. And we're going to start with my deck. I'm going to tuck the two of wands in. Going to shuffle. And I'm going to find the two of wands in this deck. The magician and the chariot. Okay, the magician in the chariot. That's really freaking powerful. Okay. Yeah, so you are telling me that this is going to be about some alignment, some powerful alignment with my, with my own psyche and then that power of the chariot. Okay. Um, we're going to look for the two of wands now in the avatar. Yeah. Okay. Um, it brought me between the ace of pentacles and the six of pentacles. And I don't think either of them take me where I need to go this year. So avatar, you're out. Okay, I wanted it to stay in. I love it so much power, but it's taking me toward that kind of um, giving, receiving energy of the pentacles. And I don't think that's, that's where I need to go right now. It's not the energy that draws me. Okay, let's do Ostara. Four of Cups, which I got when I did my dialogue with this deck. And uh, the Nine of Wands. So, you know, what it means to accept the gift. And then this, this fierce, uh, embattled vigilance. Yeah. Dissatisfaction and vigilance. Working with those energies. There's something that seems really right about that. And now finally, um, Red Seed. Okay, so we have the Queen of Wands, the Queen of Torches, and the Seeker of Seeds. So that's the Knight of Pentacles, right? And there's the Two of Torches. That's, this is a gorgeous deck, isn't it? Okay, Queen of Wands and Seeker of Seeds. <sighs> yeah. Mm. So, wow. I'm still having a hard time. I think we have to do Sudden Death. I think we have to do Sudden Death. So we have to do one... Last card, make it or break it from each of these decks. And this is going to be the energy, the single, um, the 
this is going to be the the governing energy that you are going to bring to my work with you this fall okay red seed tara what is the energy you're going to bring to my work with you this fall and it is the five of torches okay no no i don't want that Okay, soul card tarot. What is the energy that you're going to bring? The single the single governing energy that you're going to bring to my work with you this fall. So Red Seeds Tarot was pulling forward this fire comb fiery combative energy and I don't want it. I don't want Five of Torches energy. That's not what I want. And you're saying the sun, or is that the emperor? Yeah, that's the emperor. <sighs> okay, so you're saying the emperor. Oh, I don't think that's what I need. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe that strong fire, masculine fire. Okay, Astara. Sudden death. What is the single governing energy you're going to bring to our work together this fall? <laughs> okay, all right, okay. Seven of Pentacles. Okay. Oh, that makes me laugh. Um, okay. I've pulled so many cards tonight. I think that this is the card that I started with from this deck, isn't it? Yeah? Or am I remembering another reading? That's why I laugh so hard. But yeah, I think it's Astara, which is, I mean, I wanted it to be Astara, and then I didn't want it to be Astara. And originally I thought I wanted it to be Ritual Tarot, and then I thought I wanted it to be Red Seeds Tarot. There was a very strong push for my own deck. And then when, when this wild card came in, I was like, oh, but please, look how gorgeous it is. Um, and then I was like, it has to be a, it has to be Rachel Pollock's deck, doesn't it? And then Terror of the Crone seemed like, you know, thematically, and the reading I did with it when I was doing the dueling deck, that seemed like what it had to be. And then Mary L. I mean, I, I realized, like, I feel like I'm a loser if I'm not reading with Mary L. All of this stuff, people. But it's the Astara. The patience. Um, the leaning into growth. Oh, Terra Avatara. I wanted to be that deck too, but it is Ostara. It is the Ostara Tarot. That is the deck I'm going to be working with this fall. There you go. All right. <sighs> Drop them 78, folks. It's about to begin. It's not too late to join in, by the way. It's not too late. Okay. Thank you so much for your practice. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for your energy. Thanks for everything. And uh, I'll see you. See you maybe in the Zoom room. Come join us. Join the Mindful Tarot community if you haven't yet. Toodles. Okay, Bachelor Xs. I think we're done. <laughs>